Pawn Stars has been running for over a decade now, and over the seasons we have seen many huge deals on the show. But while most of these deals were made by one of the Harrisons, even the show's jokester has made the gold and silver pawn shop some cash. With his happy-go-lucky attitude, Chumley took the viewers' hearts by storm. But he also has some pretty good negotiating skills. So let's take a look at 10 of the biggest Pawn Stars deals Chumley ever made. Chumley is often portrayed as being clueless, often breaking things, ignoring his bosses, or making terrible deals. But every once in a while, even the Pawn Stars goofball makes a good deal. When a customer brought in a pair of vintage nickel-plated Scottish pistols, asking for around $8,000 for the 175-year-old saw handle pistols, Chum made the right decision by calling in an expert. Alex Cranmer confirmed that the pistols were a creation of Alexander Henry, the most famous gunmaker from the Victorian era. Alex estimated that the pistols could bring around $5,000 to $6,000 at auction, so the owner lowered his initial asking price to $4,200. Chumley eventually got his customer to agree to a price of $3,300, sealing one of the best deals in his career. Chumley often seems to be the scapegoat when something goes wrong at the pawn shop, and especially in the earlier seasons, he usually deserved it. In one episode, he was minding the shop by himself when he was offered a Gibson mandolin. Thank you. While this could have been one of the biggest deals, it unfortunately turned out that the mandolin, an A model with the Gibson on the headstock in the old script, was one of the thousands of fakes that can be found around the US. It did have the decals on the edges and through one of the F holes you could even see the stamp of the modern script Gibson logo, but besides that it seemed different. Chumley still bought the mandolin for $1500, despite the fact that his purchase limit is $1000, which is not unfounded. A friend and music shop owner later estimated the mandolin's worth to be just a hundred dollars. This is fake as hell, man. <laughs> I just paid fifteen hundred dollars for that. Ouch. In season 4, Corey and Chumley met a guy to look at a 1986 Buick Regal. Chumley immediately fell in love with the car, prompting Corey to remind him that you're supposed to pretend like you don't like it when you're buying it. I think I might be in love. You know you're supposed to pretend like you don't like it when you're buying it. You know what? Big Hoss was not impressed by all the stuff the owner had done to the Buick and wasn't willing to pay more than $1,500, one grand less than the seller Nader was looking to get. While Corey was ready to walk away, Chumley and Nader agreed on a deal at $2,000 and the Pawn Stars fan favorite then took the Buick to Danny the Count Coker to get some custom work done. The other three Pawn Stars weren't very impressed when Chumley and Danny presented the car when it was done, as there were no visible changes, until Chumley got into the car and demonstrated the newly installed hydraulic system that allows the driver to bounce around in the car. While Corey and Rick couldn't stop laughing, the old man simply stated that it was the most stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Still, he got into the car to have Chumley give him a ride home and couldn't do anything about being bounced around himself. Damn it, Chumley. Hold on, I just want to show you the full potential of the vehicle. When a guy came in with an old book about how to play different card games, Chumley didn't really understand why the customer was asking $1,500 for it. $1,500, man, I was thinking 20, 30 bucks. I looked online, I found one similar, and they were asking 25. Fittingly enough, the seller had won the book in a poker game and when Rebecca Romney came to appraise it, she was pretty excited. Published in 1866, this book was one of the first books on how to play poker, with the very first one recorded being from 1858. The rare book expert said that it was worth around two grand, and with Vegas being the perfect market for a book like this, Chum was eager to make a deal. Although he didn't meet his customer's new offer of $1,800, they eventually struck a deal at $1,375. $5, which was actually pretty close to the seller's original offer. In the season 9 episode, I'll Be Doggone, a woman brought in a Snoopy book from 1958 with the hand-drawn picture by author Charles Schultz. Then the next caption, you got Snoopy doing the dog paddle on the back, just coasting along. I guess they're mad Snoopy can just swim like that. <laughs> 
While she was hoping to get five grand for it, Chumley was not sure how much the book was worth or if the drawing was actually by the author or had perhaps just been added by the customer's uncle. So he decided to call rare book expert Rebecca. The book lover was happy to see the book in such good condition with the paperback still intact and the red color of the cover not really fainted. However, she also pointed out that one had to be very careful with the drawings when it comes to shawls because about half of them were fake. Luckily, she found this one to be real based on the fact that it was drawn routinely and that the signature had ink blots that would be impossible to fake. Because the drawing was of Lucy and not of Snoopy though, she estimated its value to be around $3,200 to $3,500. While the customer now asked for $3,000 and then went down to $2,500 and even $2,000, Chumley wasn't willing to go higher than $1,400 and he eventually got her to agree to that. Rapper Flavor Flav rose to fame as a member of the hip-hop group Public Enemy in the 1980s, and in season 14 of Pawn Stars, he came to the Harrison's Pawn Shop with a statue of O.J. Simpson. So yo, the reason why I bought this here to you is because I know that this is the place for me to get my right deal. He then proceeded to introduce Chumley to the statue, which was the original statue that once sat poolside at OJ's home on Rockingham Avenue in Los Angeles until his estate was liquidated in 1999. The hip hop star was looking to sell his bronze friend because he didn't have enough space for him at his house. And he was convinced that the statue was worth at least $125,000. After taking a closer look at it, Chumley said that the most he could do was probably 75,000 to 80,000 and only after checking with his boss. Flavor Flav was pretty disappointed and seemed almost angry for a moment because he didn't seem to understand why Chum couldn't go higher than that, even though he knew that the OJ Simpson statue would sell for over a hundred grand at auction. That's the best you could do for me, 75 to 80,000, that's I the think best. think that's a good offer, I mean. Come on, man, you the pawn star master, G. Ultimately, the rapper understood that the pawn shop still needed to make a profit, but decided that he'd rather hold on to the statue than try to sell it at auction himself. In the season 8 episode Lost in Spacelander, Chumley spotted a very special bike when driving by some random guy's house. Sensing that this could be his lucky day, Chum decided to stop and check out this 1959 Bowden Spacelander. The owner revealed that only a handful of these bikes were actually in private hands, with most of the other exiting ones being in museums. This man had received the bike as a present for his 10th birthday, and despite having a hard time parting with it, he decided to sell it to Chumley. His initial asking price was 20 grand while Chumley only offered seven. How much are you trying to sell it for? 20,000. Ooh wee. Would you be willing to take 7,000 for it? Oh. However, the seller needed some cash and eventually agreed to let go of his space lander for $8,700. This incredible deal even impressed Rick and the old man and got Chumley his first bonus ever. After working in the Harrison store for a whole decade, he received an $1,000 bonus. In my day, a bonus meant you could still stand after a hard day's work. In season 15 of Pawn Stars, a guy named Kyle walked into the Harrison's pawn shop with an incredible vintage Beatles vinyl collection. After 12 to 15 years of collecting, he was ready to sell the records to start a new collection and was hoping to get $26,500 for the old one. It contained a few albums in different variations, such as some that only fan club members got, first pressings, and even a few records that were printed so quickly to meet the demand that they forgot to include the information about the producers. Chumley was aware of the Beatles' great popularity even to this day, of course, but he still decided to call in Clint McKean, the owner of Moondog Records, who immediately picked out some cherries like sealed records and records with so-called hype stickers that listed some of the band's hit songs. The expert was pretty impressed by the huge collection, with so many sealed records in near mint condition, and estimated that they had a retail value of about $30,000. Chum's first offer was just fifteen grand, and Kyle wasn't happy until the two old ultimately agreed on a price of $20,000.
While everyone knows that you need to spend money to make money, buying a 31 ton Robosaurus might not be the way to go. However, that is what Chumley really wanted to do in a 2012 episode of the show, but what could have been his biggest deal was fortunately prevented from ever happening by Cory. The machine that was built in the 80s is a transforming Tyrannosaurus Rex that can breathe fire and eats cars, trucks, and even small planes. The seller tried to convince Chumley and Big Hoss of his money-making machine by claiming that they could earn up to $25,000 a day by renting it out. However, the seller was asking for an insane price of a million dollars, and Corey ignored the overly excited Chumley, calling Robosaurus the biggest, most impractical thing he had ever come across. And not buying the Robosaurus was definitely the right decision, as the last time the machine changed hands was at a classic car auction in Arizona in 2008 for the low price of $500. $175,000. Seems like the owner wanted to make a few extra bucks in addition to all the cash that his money making machine must have earned him already. But this time the Pawn Stars weren't tricked so easily and avoided breaking their bank account. There have been a number of celebrities making cameos on Pawn Stars, but one of the most memorable ones was surely UFC President Dana White's appearance on Season 15. Rick had just been returned his early 1600s Japanese katana after a two year long restoration process in Japan, and being an avid collector himself, Dana White expressed his interest in buying this special sword. Chumley managed to get his celebrity customer to agree on a price of $30,000 for this katana, and convinced him to spend an additional 30 grand on a few other swords for his weapon room as well. When Rick found out that Chum had just sold his favorite sword, he wasn't very happy until he saw who the buyer was. Recognizing a fellow sword enthusiast in Dana White, Rick offered him yet another katana and the two quickly struck a deal at $9,000. While that was a great deal as well, it definitely wasn't enough to steal Chumley's thunder since he had gotten Dana White to cash out at a whopping 60 grand long before Rick ever entered the scene. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again thank you for watching and see you next time.